Next up, Power Ads and Flow, starting with the number one most popular as voted by you guys. And what you guys pick up? What's it? What is it? It is, uh, it's a new one. It's the Nero 3, which is tiny, 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 great little flow pump, but right behind it, the former champion, the Vortec MP40. Yes, this one actually says to me, maybe that there's a whole bunch of new tanks going up, because uh, that's kind of what this is. This used to be uh, the number one, uh, the, a, uh, the MP40, uh, which is you know kind of a big brother pump, but it uh, has a higher price point to it. But this one, much lower flow, but also smaller entry level. Right? Yes. So I would say that if you're looking for you know the most popular of what people are picking up, if you got a bigger tank and higher flow needs, it tends to be the MP40, uh, which is a surprise because it's also definitely not the cheapest option out no. there. Uh, but if you're really into this, uh, you go for it. And you'll probably learn a little bit why today, when you look at the different applications of these things, why people are picking them for their options. But entry level, uh, Nero 3 really doesn't get much better. All right, so best for LPS corals and creating a current in the tank instead of turbulence. What is it? It's going to be a gyre pump. It's really hard to argue. Uh, gyre pumps create a lot of flow in a laminar style, which means you're going to be whipping that flow around the top of the tank, down the sides of the tank, and back. So you're creating a lot of flow, but not directly on top of your corals. That flow is going to be dragging the rest of the water behind it and around it, keeping things suspended, and uh, making sure that the corals within the tank are getting the flow they need without getting absolutely pounded with water. So this is kind of the way that it works is uh, in like tidal zones of the reef. You know, you got a lot of like corals that really like a lot of flow and they like turbulence. They like it when, you know, the waves come crashing in. They like it when all the water goes into a shore, but then gets too heavy and comes back out and then they hit each other and create shifting points of turbulence. And you can tell because they have these little teeny cor or, or polyps that you know, are capable of withstanding that kind of turbulence. Okay, but then down deeper, where you find a lot of things like euphilia and chorches, you know those things would all die, you yeah. know, if you put them up there. And they have not evolved in that area. What they've evolved in is much deeper, where they get currents. And the currents change, you know, this isn't like, a, this is like a reef current. So it's based on tidal swells. So the tidal swell will bring it in and then it'll get too heavy and then it will come back out and it'll change the direction of the current. And so in this case, you know, the torch coral can kind of move around with it. But the gyre is one of the best at creating this because basically all the water that's shooting that jet over the top or behind the back, all has to return somewhere. You know, it has to come back into the pump itself. So if I shoot a sheet of water across the back, it's going to create a current that goes in front of the entire tank as it returns to it. And then if I shoot uh, the current back the other direction, it will do the same thing. Same thing if I shoot the current across the top of the tank, well, now it has to dredge across the bottom. Yeah. And even more, if I create a, even a shifting point of turbulence where two dryers hit each other in the back, now the water has to flush out through the middle and return. So you can create those currents probably better for a lot of the SPS corals you care for using something like a gyre. In that spirit, what is the best value gyre? The best value gyre is going to be the Max Spec Jump Series. You're getting that gyre technology. It's got the same uh, sine wave, super quiet, um, and you're doing it on a budget. It has a slightly less complicated controller. There's a little bit less uh, programming options involved, but it's still a super capable pump. You're going to be able to use it the exact way you need to use a gyre just without spending the extra for app control. So just for reference point, uh, most of the gyres that are out there are actually made by MaxSpec. Yep. They're just kind of OEM with different feature sets and stuff on, on them. Uh, so when you're buying from MaxSpec, you're you know getting the real deal. Uh, these are the people that created it to begin with and uh, have really kind of perfected the technology over time. Uh, but also the part that probably is really important to a lot of people is if you do the math on it, like this thing is functions out of the box. You don't need any external controllers. You don't need anything else for it. And if you do the math on it, when you buy any one of the other ones out there and you're just buying a single gyre, the cost of them are easily a hundred dollars or more or more, you know, in yes. most cases. So not only from the real deal, but also significantly cheaper as well. All right, there is a different angle on this, which is I just want the best, I don't care, tell me what it is, and there's an answer. 
Yeah, it's going to be the new Gyre Cloud Edition. Uh, not only did they make what is probably the best physical controller that I've seen for a flow pump in a long time, big bright screen, easy to operate, physical buttons, really nice. Uh, but they've also done something really cool with the ability to aim these dryers by breaking up each side of the pump into two segments. And then also on top of that, having the new flow uh, deflectors with their own internal adjustments for left and right. So you can really send these pumps uh, flow in all different directions. Yeah, so uh, aimability is one of the really cool things with power heads. And so the original gyres, you know, are just two big rods and you could turn the back one up and the front one different direction if you wanted, but like there wasn't a lot of applications. Yeah, just those know, two that. points. That's, that's yeah. it. Okay, and you definitely weren't going left or right at yeah. all. Okay, so now with the advent of the new cloud edition, both sides have two independent angles. So that means one of them I could, in the front of the tank, shoot water across the front of it. And then the other one I could turn down a little bit to kind of aim at the rock work. And in the back, the same thing. I could aim back the rock work, but I could also shoot water across the top. And then if I was blasting a coral that I don't really like, they now have these little uh, directors in there or diverters where I can change where it's gonna go within each one of those four points as well. Like this is the gyre that we've all been waiting for. Yeah, we're going to, from two points up to eight points of direction. Okay, and one of the things that I noticed with the gyre too, and it's been around for a while, but I, I, I didn't notice it until I saw it. I'm like, oh, I get it now. One of the pitches that they'll tell you is that, you know, the uh, Cloud Edition or the 300 series from Max Spec specifically comes with these little clips that go on and they will tell you that their gyre, this one, does like 20% or so more flow with the exact same wattage uh, just because it's designed better. And I'm like, well, you know, is that true or not? And then I saw it and I'm like, oh, of course it's true because what they've done is created an adductor. They clip on these little clips now too that direct the flow, but also it's an adductor, meaning it's open on the back. So the sheer function of shooting water out the front creates negative pressure behind it, which just sucks in some free flow yep. and sends it out. <laughs> so it is, it's producing more flow and it's aimable, which makes this easily the best. Also, one more thing. Oh yeah. Some of them you can control with the little box. Some of them you can control with your phone. And then some of them you could do both. All right, next up, most people wouldn't shop this way, uh, but I almost refuse to not have at least one thing that will do this. So uh, what is the best for a power outage? So there's two ways to look at this. You could have the easiest plug and play option that's gonna do the best job in a power outage situation. I think it's very easy to say hands down. That's gonna be the Vortec pumps. They've got the battery backup that you can pick up. It's ready to go. It's just plug and play with the pumps. You get it knocked together and you've got several hours of protection once uh, you lose power, which is great because that's life-saving flow. That's the thing that matters most, keeping the oxygen in the tank, keeping that water moving for your fish and corals. If you're a little bit more uh, concerned about longevity, you want the longest possible battery runtime, or you just wanna be able to piece it together yourself, Tunes has an awesome connector that will allow you to hook up uh, basically those larger DC 12 volt batteries. Uh, so you can build out a power bank that's going to last for a longer period of time, which is something I can definitely appreciate living rurally where there's not a lot of uh, options once the power goes out. Um, that's a fantastic option. Yeah, you said a couple of hours or a few hours. Do you know how many? I think the, it's 10, isn't it? This one? Yeah. 80. Holy! 80. And we actually did a BRSTV Investigates on it, and it actually went beyond that. That's man. insane. So that it will do 80 for a long time, even as it wears out or, you know, over the years. Uh, 80. I mean, you're talking multiple days. I'm stuck. Like, why that matters is because all of you, all of you will run into a power outage. And by all, I mean, like, you know, 99.9% of It's going to happen at some point. Yeah, at some point. It's just a matter of time. Uh, you, uh, most of you will not be there when it happens. You won't know or you'll be sleeping. And this is how we get oxygen to the animals inside uh, of the tank. So this is one of those things where like, I wish everybody would just listen one time because it's one of those things where like, yeah, I just don't feel like I really want to address this. I hear what you're saying. And then you'll understand like why one day and it'll be the hard way and you don't have to learn that way. So it's not that all of the tank of lights or all the pumps in here have to have uh, the ability to turn on automatically when uh, the power goes out. But one wow. pump, man, just one pump on the whole thing. It could be the tunes. It could be this. Now, there are different options here. Yeah. Like, 
You could go get a battery backup for like a computer. Like right? an APC. Yeah. Okay, that is really popular. Note though that in my experience, and by experience we did an investigates on this. They have most, max run times. Most of them only last a few hours. Like they're not really designed to keep one of these things running forever. They have big inverters designed to, you know, like run a whole computer for a while. You yes. know, not a 13 watt pump. Uh, one of the cool things, the reason why this thing can go 80 is because it's functioning intelligently, which as soon as the power goes off, the flow actually cuts in half. Now that's something you can configure. If you really wanted the whole flow, you could get it. But what it's saying is, hey, you know what? Uh, optimal energy and, you know, for, you know, d you know, getting flow for photosynthesis, photosynthesis is no longer important. No, your lights are off. Yeah, like just making sure the fish have oxygen are the most important thing. Half the flow will do that. It'll turn over the water and do it. Now, the cool thing about this one, this is probably like the least known option out there because its name is terrible. <laughs> it's called the uh, Tune Safety Connector is what it is, right? And like you said, basically what you're going to go do with this is go to Batteries Plus or a store like that and buy whatever battery it is that uh, you want, that you know, the size that you want that works with this. Uh, and then hook it up with a like a little trickle charger, essentially. Just a couple of inexpensive things. They're commodity items, you know, batteries. It should be cheap. Uh, and then what happens is the pump will turn on automatically. In this case, it won't do it in half, uh, half output, uh, but I, the benefit to this is you can get the biggest battery you want. Yeah. If you could get a battery so big that it would run for a week if you wanted to, uh, it's a little bit more of a DIY looking project than something refined here. But in any case, whether it be a UPC from, uh, or UPS from your uh, like a computer store or one of these options, pick up something for at least one pumps. This one here, probably the best option out there. All right, next best for our friend SPS Coral or Turbulence, what is it? That's gonna be either the AI Nero or the Vortex. Yeah, so the uh, Nero here and the Vortex, basically what we're looking for is a high velocity uh, flow that hits each other and creates turbulent flow, similar to what happens, all the pressures uh, that are happening on the like crest of a reef and where all the SPS corals are. So we're trying to like create that turbulent, turbulent flow, gets through the boundary radiator, gets rid of all those gases, deliver nutrients and elements. And one of the other cool things is, you probably didn't know this, but those little like uh, control modes actually matter. Which one do you use? I've uh, always really liked either a randomized mode or like the reef crest mode, uh, something that's going to basically change up how much flow is coming out of each pump so that I'm getting more varied uh, points throughout the tank of those flows crashing into one another and spreading throughout the uh, coral branches. This is, I find particularly important if you've got acros that are very densely branched or tabling where getting the flow through the branches to break that boundary layer and push everything out while bringing in that nutrients they require is critical. So the reason we have varied flow is because if I just turn them both on, you know, 100%, it's going to meet in the middle of the tank. There's equal opposing forces, you know, hitting in the center of the tank, creating turbulence. And even if they weren't dead on, they would create turbulence in the center of the tank as they slowly miss each other, right? This is where all the turbulence is going. But if I have like varied flow, and especially if I like set one up uh, as the opposite of yeah. the other one. Anti-sync. Anti-sync, which is yeah. an important function in a lot of these things. What will happen is this one will be on for 80% and this one will be on only 20%, which puts a point of turbulence right here. It's really strong and it's barely fighting. But within an hour, this one will be on 80%, and this one will be on 20 and the shifting point of turbulence. So what we're not doing is blasting all of the corals in the exact same way all day, every day. And then if we have extra pumps, so some of these pumps out there, like the Vortex, actually allow you to put pumps on the back. Up to and four they, pumps, yeah. They, and they include that into the cycle, right? And so it's not just shifting pumps going back and forth, but now water is like coming from the back or the bottom and shifting points of turbulence as all this water is hitting each other throughout the entire tank. All right, best for low profile. We disagreed. We did, we did. I, I'm partial to the Nero 3s because of that puck format. They're super, super tiny. They got a really thin cable. They're really easy to sneak in small places. And for nano tanks where uh, space is at a premium, that's usually my go-to. But yours is a good option too. Uh, for me, it was the CHA Extreme. Uh, if I really want low profile, 
Uh, I can aim those guys so they don't have to like be dead center. I can kind of put them in the back. Yeah. You know, the Nero can be aimed a little bit too, but like this option uh, for me, it's just so low profile looking. These guys are just, just tiny. So uh, in some cases I would probably use a lot of these over uh, like a bunch of big ones or a yeah. half as many big ones, just because these, the nature of how small they are makes them almost invisible. Next one. Uh, the throne has changed, or at least now somebody's sharing this throne, which is the best for aiming used to be. It used to be tunes, and, and they for a very long time had the most flexible pumps possible for aiming. The ball socket design of the pumps basically makes it possible for you to aim them in any direction, 360 degrees, whether it's down the pane of glass that they're attached to or off into the distance in any direction. But with the uh, change up of the cloud gyre coming into the arena here, making the gyre pump one of the most flexible uh, for aiming, it's uh, it's got its work cut out for it. Yeah, it's a close call. I was to give it to the tune stream because the tune streams, this is one of the most versatile pumps out there. Yeah. Uh, the globe nature of it means I can literally point it 100% directly down. I could do that with the gyre, right? Yep. Uh, but in the tune stream, I can also point it 100% left or right. I don't know why you would do that, but you can. Right? Yes. It can really go anywhere. So there's a lot of areas like in between your aquascape or whatever, you might wanna aim it. I wanna go right there and I can you know, aim it there. Now the gyre can do the same thing, right? I can go left and right. I can now go up and down. The difference here is now I can go up and down, left and right all at the same time. Yes. With a, with a single power head, right? Yeah. Which even sounds crazy as it came out. <laughs> right now. Uh, and you can't really get necessarily all the way left, right. But what you can do is turn it. So a lot of people will use it this way, you know, going long way over the tank, but you can also put it up and down along the back of the tank uh, and shoot water across or aside, in which case it is one of the most flexible, aimable pumps out there. You now have two options. Use the right tool for the job that you have. All right, next one is best wide angle. I want a lot of flow, but I want it to not be just pound anything, just dispersed over a large area. What is it? There's a clear winner here, and it's the Tunes 6095. This is a massive wide angle pump. Uh, in our flow testing, it was all the way at the end. Like it had the widest angle of any pump and uh, it's actually a pump that I really like to use, especially in systems where you have coral wall to wall and you really want more flow in a specific area, but you're gonna be next to a coral and there's nothing you can do about that. Having a pump like the 6095 means you can get that massive amount of water movement in a very wide and gentle way. So you're not blowing the tissue off the coral that's right next to the pump, but still able to provide the flow that that coral is gonna require to be happy and healthy. Mm -hmm. So if think about it the, in this terms, like what we did is, shot dye into them in the testing and you yes. can shoot it out and you can see exactly where it's going. We measured the angle on it, right? By far the widest angle of anything that we try. Uh, and one of the things you'll note though, is it lacks the velocity. So even though it's doing the same amount of water as some of the other ones, it won't transverse the entire tank. No. You know, it'll, it'll go really much slower. And the reason for that is think of your garden hose. When I crank it down, you know, to a small little hole, you know, shooting water 30 feet that direction. And then I crank it wide open and it goes into a wide mist load. There might be actually almost the same amount of water coming out of it in both cases, but one of them spread over a large area and one of them's fake fo focused like a, like a laser beam. So that's what we're doing with these pumps too. And, and most people don't know it when they're sele selecting these pumps. They're not trying to get the right tool for the right job. Because if I looked at it and I'm like, you know what? I got a dead spot there and I really want to fill it. One of the dead spots is super common is actually the sides of the tank yeah. uh, down below the pumps because the pumps, you know, power heads are focused on the sides. Shoot, and if you look, that's where all the gunk like settles out. Right? Yeah. So if I had a couple of these wide flow pumps on the back of the tank shooting forward, I'm gonna keep all that stuff suspended and I can aim it below where the flow is, keep everything going the way that it should be. All right, next up, best entry level pump or uh, beginner's pump. What is it? Because cost matters in this case almost all the time. Uh, in this case, it's going to be another tunes pump, but it's just going to be the general AC nano stream pumps. These are very cost effective pumps. It's an AC pump, so it's simple, but there are so many options that you can pick the right flow pattern you need 
for the spot in the tank that you need to put that pump. So even though it's AC and you're not able to adjust the amount of flow coming out of the pump, you can get the right tool for the right job and make sure that your corals are getting exactly what they need. You can actually adjust it fairly easy. It's called uh, a controller, which is also a digital timer. Uh, That's they, true. They, they sell them for you get a pulse bucks. mode going. By 15 bucks, you can buy one of these things. Uh, and uh, all it is is just the same light timer you'd buy at Home Depot. And the way that I used to set them up uh, before all these fancy lights came out, you know, 20 years ago when we were in the dark ages, uh, is I'd turn one on for 15 minutes and it would create flow going this way. I'd turn uh, one on, uh, turn that one off, turn the other one on for 15 minutes and it would create that. Uh, and then I'd turn them both on for 15 minutes. You know, you could even do it 20 minutes, so it like breaks into an hour perfectly. Right. But then what I'm doing is getting currents going both directions and then points of turbulence as well. And it shifts throughout the day. It's really easy to do. You can do it with your uh, you know, standard aquarium controller. They even make like the little wave makers you could plug yeah. into it if you wanted to. But the nature of the AC pumps is most of these things are over 100 bucks and most of the AC pumps are well under 100 bucks. So uh, you can get probably twice the amount of pumps, physical pumps for a lot less uh, money, making it a great option for beginners and entry level reefers. All right, next one it comes with the evolution of how that uh, today's reefers do aquascapes, which is we used to stack it all in the back and then create this big giant dead zone and all the pollution just correct collects there. Most reefers aren't doing that anymore. Uh, so usually the aquascape is pulled off the back a little bit and we provide flow behind it to the best of our ability. Uh, so what are the best options for getting flow behind the rock work? There's a, two really solid options for this. Uh, one of them might not be as obvious, but gyre pumps. So I know we're used to seeing gyre pumps up at the top of the tank blowing across the top, but you can take it and put it on the back of the tank blowing across from the back to the front push the water down across the front of the tank and towards the back and scoop all of that debris and stuff from behind the rock up. That really depends on your aquascape. So you can also mount them even vertically on the overflow and push it from the side outward to blow water uh, away from the back of that rock structure and get it moving. So nothing's settling back there. But I've got like a secret super uh, fancy little pump that nobody really thinks of because it's a weird looking pump, but it's one of my favorites and it's the Tunes 6040. It is a fantastic pump specifically for this job. The way it's oriented is a little odd. So you've got the pump basically facing at a 90 degree angle from the magnetic mount, but you've got this little flow deflector that sits on top to shoot it up and over. So you can almost create the exact same gyre type effect, but in very small tanks. And if you take that flow deflector off, you can literally just turn the pump sideways near the bottom of the tank, have it mounted on the back, so so it's not on the sides, but is blowing down the entire back of the tank. It is a fantastic little pump specifically for these kinds of jobs in smaller tanks. And I love it. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, can you tell? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's got the little scoop thing that shoots it up and shoots it at you. Uh, and then, like you said, you can pull the scoop off and create your own little cannon as well. Uh, those are great options. The gyre, though, really is probably for most people the easiest way. And what it's going to do is keep all of the garbage flushed out where it would normally have collected did keep it suspended a lot of those organics the corals can actually eat instead of just rotting in the tank uh, and what also you'll see here is where that area used to be kind of like a biological dead spot in the tank yeah. corals are going to make their way back there now yeah. and so now that kind of side shot of the tank uh, all of a sudden it looks like it's filling out in that direction too so you actually get a more robust cooler looking tank when you provide for biology throughout the whole thing Gyres turn sideways, one more benefit, a cord travels up it, so you don't even see the cord. One of the most low profile options as well. All right, next up is when you're gonna mount pumps on the bottom of the tank, there's a the best option. And that's gonna be a Vortec for, for some pretty obvious reasons. Once you've got a pump all the way down at the bottom of the tank, you don't want a cord traveling all the way to the surface. And maybe that doesn't bother you, but it's really tough for a lot of people, especially when you wanna get that in and out from behind the rock work, it's just, uh, a mess. So the benefit of the Vortec here is that you don't have a cord inside the tank. You just have that low profile wet side down there. So getting it in and out for maintenance is going to be way easier. And it's just a lot, a lot easier to look at. You don't, I'm not looking at. You know, I, one of the things that bothers me is all these years, nobody's actually like stepped up their game on the cord, Why? which, which means like it's, 
like comes to you zip tied, like bent back and forth, you know? And then when you put it in the tank, you have to like watch it. Do this. <laughs> you know, it's just, I mean, it looks so unorganic. It doesn't look like a reef anymore. It looks like this weird thing through the course. Science project. Okay, so that's true if you put it on the top. Well, by the way, the solution to that is a nice core that retains its, its a linear line. Yes. Because if it was just a linear line, it would, it would look way less worse, right? Uh, but if you're going to go to the bottom of the tank, the problem is now like it's stretching all the way. And so you might be thinking, like, why do we even want to go to the bottom of the tank? This is the bare bottom crowd, yes. right? Uh, you have a, accepted the reality that sand looks awesome. We all love it. Uh, I won't live without it anymore. I don't care about the benefits. <laughs> I, I still love sand. I'm going to put it in. Yep. But there's no question that a tank that doesn't have sand ends up being more stable. Harder first year or so. But after that, it's more stable because it doesn't collect pollution in the same way. Uh, but part of that is you got to ad adapt that it, you can't let just let it pool up anywhere in there either. So you're shooting water across the bottom now, keeping all that stuff suspended so the filtration can remove it and ends up down in the sump. Uh, but quartz, ugh. Yeah. the uh, the gyre in this case, you can, or not the gyre, the uh, vortex, vortex yeah. you can magnetically couple it all the way on the bottom, especially if you kind of put it in the back some cases. It doesn't even put an uh, eyesore on no. uh, the side of the tank, uh, even outside of it. It's just a really cool solution. Now, there is one. You're going to get a little bit of a wonky cord, but you hide it a little bit better that a lot of people don't use. It's actually the Tunes Nano Stream and that rock that they made. Yes. Yeah, so you can actually hide the pump inside of the rock. Figure out how to uh, account for the cord, however, the best you can. But now the pump itself is actually hidden. And instead of all the pump shooting down, it's actually kind of shooting up. Yeah, so different options if you're going to shoot water across the bottom. All right, another one, best for the back of the tank. In this case, I don't mean back like you're shooting water across the back. I mean, the pumps are literally mounted on the back. So, you know, the magnet is uh, on the other side of the tank. There are some options that are best for this. Uh, Vortec, big win. It's just for the very similar reasons as to why they work really well for the bottom of the tank. The back of the tank is the easiest. You're not constantly pulling out the entire pump and the cord to do maintenance. It's just that quick swap on the wet side. Makes life a lot easier. Plus you don't have those cords snaking around. Visually, it just looks a lot better. So anytime that if you could use just only Vortex, that means literally this tank is now visually free of motors uh, and cords. I don't see them on the sides. I don't see them anywhere. I do see the little fan blades coming out or the uh, propellers, but that's it. Uh, it is the slickest looking thing. And one area where this is the most attractive is peninsulas. Yeah, right. Big so, time. And peninsula, the beauty of it is you have a three angle viewing pane and like adding a bunch of pumps and magnets to the outside of it kind of hurts that effect. Yeah. So if you can get pumps that are shooting across the back that way and don't have any cords, this is one of the coolest applications of mounting the back you can find. All right, we hit this one a little bit earlier, but let's just nail it. Best for hard to hit spots. And in that case, we're going right back to the uh, Tunes stream pumps. The ability to get uh, a varied flow pattern so you can get a tighter beam angle um, and then also have that ball socket style ability to direct the flow means you're gonna have a really easy time getting flow regardless of where you have to mount the pump exactly where you want it to go to kill those dead spots. So if there's a theme building here, it's right tool, right job. It's not that any one of these brands of pumps up here is better than the other one. They're better at a specific thing, right? And so it's in our nature to want out, go and like buy one brand and, you know, have it all be the same. And I'll be honest, it does look better that way in many cases. Uh, like if I had, you know, four tuneses in there, it might actually look better than two tuneses and two something else because yeah. it just kind of draws the eye. Uh, but the reality is, is if I really care about the biology and nutrient export and breaking the boundary layer, uh, if I want to do that, well, now I'm going to create turbulence. I'm going to find the dead spot in between the rocks where water just isn't flowing. And you can visually see it, throw some food in there. You can just watch it blow all over the front and then all the other dead spots. And the important thing here that, you know, worldwide taught me was the gallons per hour and tank turnover is garbage. It doesn't matter if it's 30 uh, feet a second or, you know, or if it's, uh, you know, 300, you know, 3,000 gallons an hour. It doesn't matter what it is. It's actually more about the velocity 
right? 100%. You know, so how do I get the velocity to break that boundary layer in various areas of the tank? And the reality is, is it's not just the corals in the front that like it. In fact, what you'll find is if you look closely, the corals will actually often grow into the flow. Yeah. Right? Not away from it, like you would think. They grow into it because that's where the best biology is. And so if you have really good flow on one side of it, you know, the coral will not grow uniformly. It will grow towards it and it'll get this really weird shape. I've seen corals, especially SPS, almost make a cone around the flow growing into the pump. And the back of it will often die. It's yeah. going to be healthy all over the place. And so when you look at this, you have to say, how do I get the right amount of velocity everywhere in the tank, not just for a handful of corals up front? When you do that, that's when you get that uniform, cool look where the whole thing grows uniformly together to create a natural looking reef. And sometimes you got to find the dead spots and the tunes is probably the best solution for that. All right, next up, uh, a lot of people, they may not shop for this, but you will wish you did, which is <laughs> what is the easiest to maintain? I think we've been hinting at this through uh, most of the video, but the Vortex are going to take the win on this. The ability to just get extra wet sides for those pumps and take one out that's covered in coralline and junk, throw it in a citric acid bath and let it sit and just drop in a new one that's already clean and not have to deal with it right away or lose flow while you're, you know, waiting for that citric acid bath to do its job. It's just the best option. And I, I'm pretty, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a lazy reefer a lot of the time. I got a lot going on. So I gotta find easier ways to uh, make maintenance quick and fast and, and pain-free. And the Vortex just do such a good job of it. Yeah, I think there's three ways to clean a pump. One is uh, I could grab the whole pump, take the wiring out, undo my uh, wiring, uh, like the Velcro straps or zip ties or whatever bring those pumps all the way to the sink, clean them, soak them, whatever, man, and then go reinstall them, send the wires back through. I already hate my life. I was just gonna uh, say, I'm feeling it already. Yeah, okay, the next option is I could bring like a five gallon pail full of water and citric acid, uh, set it on a stool next to the sump, take the pump out, hope I got enough slack, put it in there and just let it run for like the next hour or so. Uh, and it's probably just gonna clean itself almost magically. Uh, and you can probably pop it back in. You can actually disassemble them, clean them even more yeah. than that. I find sometimes disassembling pumps actually is more stressful on them and that just putting it in there, running it in the citric acid is a better. Yeah. Uh, uh, you can debate that, depends on the pump itself. Uh, but the hybrid of all of that where the Vortec is I just go grab a buy extra set of wet sides for it and I will the clean looks like this pull out the old one put the new one in go dump the other one in the citric acid bath come to out tomorrow and just rinse it off yep I'm done uh, and then it's ready for next time then I can just swap them out so if like you want maintenance and what maintenance looks like by the way is you're going to spend all this money and time and like you're going to nerd out on this and find the perfect angles and all this stuff and you're going to figure it all out and then one day you're going to walk up to the tank and say why isn't it working anymore I, I, it's, I got dead spots it's because the pumps actually slowed down they got full of gunk and they're running at 40 percent of the hundred that you used to have it's barely even moving uh, you can tell that with your power monitoring on an yep. apex or a kilowatt on the wall they actually consume less power. So if this thing was supposed to take 20 watts and now it's taking 10, well, it's spinning half as fast for the most part. Uh, and you're getting half the flow or roughly in that area anyway. So uh, maintenance does matter. If biology matters and installing all of this the right way, maintenance matters as well, but we only do it when it's easy. All right, Thomas, above all else, you have one favorite in this mix. What is it? I know I just talked a lot about how I'm lazy and Vortex are awesome for that, but I, I am really, really happy with my tunes pumps so mm -hmm. tunes has got it for me between the, the ability to direct the pumps and uh the fact that they make so many different uh varied flow uh diameters for the pumps like the 6095 being really wide and then that really flexible 6040 which is great for nano tanks they've they just won me over i, I absolutely adore them they're solid pumps they last forever they've got a wicked track record i'm just i'm all in yeah, I will say that of all the solutions that we put on the BRS-160, uh, the Tuneses were one of my favorites, right? Yeah. Uh, we had all the Tuneses. You can aim them everywhere you want to go. You have wide angle, you have narrow angle, uh, and you could really get the flow that you were looking for. 
And the reason that they ultimately came off was, uh, and we even had the battery backup and everything on a whole yeah. battery. Uh, the reason they ultimately came off is I don't like maintaining them. <laughs> uh, I just totally like, fair. and like, I just, we didn't have enough length of cord where they were installed to be able to pull them off and put them into the bucket. It just became kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, and so we put the Vortex on and then ultimately we also put the gyres on because the SPS corals grew to the top and we needed to get flow across the top where it's absorbing the most photosynthetic energy and it's important. So it ended up being a mix of uh, Vortex and gyres. But in the beginning, man, I really love those tunes as well. Yeah. All right, so we know what I like, but the question is, what is Ryan like? Uh, you just heard it, actually. I like the Vortex for turbulence and for power outages and easy maintenance on the front. Uh, and then I also like to couple it with the gyres. I'm really excited about the new availability to aim the gyres where I want to go and where that will take me. Uh, so the combination of those two. And, you know, if you'd like to see the gyre get uh, like a long 80 hour type uh, battery backup solution, uh, put it in the comments, man, because uh, I say it to them all the time, <laughs> but it's you guys saying that you're willing to actually buy it, which will make them make it. So let us know, because I think that to be honest, I look at a lot of different flow options, specifically the Nero. The Nero is low profile and I like it a lot for a lot of different reasons. But in the end, I don't use it a lot just because there's no available battery backup solution yeah. for me. Uh, and so if you wanna see those things come out, you gotta ask for them uh, and uh, hopefully they'll materialize. So if you learned something new about flow and you want to uh, apply that to your tank, go ahead. But we also have an entire list of the best of the year right here. All of the things that you might be looking for, including lighting, skimmers, flow, pump, algae, all of it, bam, right here. And you can find it in that playlist.